For dental practices, Zuma has partnered with Derek to enable first-class, cloud-based dental charting that can assist you with your daily workflow. Here are the aspects that we will go over in this dental charting walkthrough. After clicking the dental chart button within the appointment screen for a patient, Zuma will take you to the patient charting overview page in Derek. Here, Derek will present the most important details from that patient. The view is divided into three sections. The treatment plan section, the oral health section with information about the patient's current plaque and bleeding index, and the medical issue section where you will see the most important medical health issue from that patient. The blue bar on the left side of the screen contains buttons for navigating to other screens. The back button will take you back to the last screen you came from. The chart button will take you to the charting view. This button gives you access to the summary information on the current patient. And the PDF button is for creating a PDF file. We'll come to this option later in these tutorials. Before we examine the patient, we need to check if he has some medical conditions that could interfere with our procedures. To add a medical condition to the list, click on the Add Issue button. You will then be able to select medical conditions the patient might have. You can always add or remove items from the list by clicking the Edit button. <music> Some clinical tests are performed in a row, whereas others are done on a specific tooth. However, entering this data into many charting applications can be extremely difficult. Most of the present-day charting systems have confusing menus, are difficult to navigate and enter data. To overcome these problems, we created two ways for entering data in the chart. One, to enter findings in a batch the other to enter findings on a single tooth. Most dentists start the dental recording process by counting the teeth present in the patient's mouth. Let's use Derek's quick select option to mark the teeth that Buck Rogers has lost during his time in space. Select the quick select bar item in the top portion of the screen. Then mark all the teeth that are missing. Next, select missing from the menu on the bottom of the screen. Other clinical tests which are performed on a number of teeth, are the cold test and the percussion test. Most dentists perform these tests on a number of teeth in a row and mark the findings in one go. Let's use Derek's quick select option to do so. Ensure that the quick select bar item in the upper portion of the screen is selected. Then mark all the teeth you want to enter the results of your test performed. Select endo tests from the menu on the bottom of the screen and select one of the endo tests you want to record. In this example, we checked all the teeth in the first quadrant with the code test. Derek gives you the option to record not only the sensibility, for example, a positive or negative test result, but also the patient's reaction in terms of pain triggering. Repeat all actions for entering the percussion test results. The quick select function is also used for entering larger prosthetic restorations like crowns, bridges or implants. The degree of freedom it offers is outstanding and there is literally no limit. Let's use the quick select function to enter a tooth carried cantilever bridge going from tooth 37 to 34. First, make sure the quick select function is activated. Then, select the abutment teeth on the chart, select crown from the menu in the bottom of the screen. Choose the material of the bridge. Define the selected teeth as abutment. Select natural since the bridge is a tooth carried bridge and hit save. Next, we have to define the pontex of the bridge. To do so, select the teeth which replace the missing teeth. Select crown. Choose the material. 
define the selected teeth as Pontex and hit save. Let's jump into what Derek is mainly designed for, the dental charting. Click on the chart button next to the oral health section. The chart view is Derek's core functionality. When you first enter the chart view, you will be presented with an overview of the upper and lower jaws. One of the key concepts of Derek is to display dental data so that everybody can understand what's shown on the screen. This is most important when it comes to explaining to the patient their oral problems. We created three different views for you. The overview, showing the buccal and occlusal aspects of the teeth in the upper and lower jaw, and the upper and lower jaw views displaying the buccal and occlusal aspects of the teeth. This is very useful for periodontal evaluation. Let's take a look at how to enter tooth-specific findings. In a clinical situation, most dentists do a full mouth checkup with a systematic approach. For example, going from one tooth to another. In this case, entering data in the chart view would not be the easiest way. In Derek, we created a special single tooth view for entering specific tooth data. Select the overview bar item in the top portion of the screen. Now, select the tooth in the chart you want to enter data on. Derek jumps straight to the single tooth view of the selected tooth. The single tooth view was designed to give you an overview of the tooth's current situation and consists of four sections. A graphical illustration of the tooth situation, the treatment list section, the endodontic status of the tooth, the periodontal status of the tooth. On the left portion of the screen, you will find a tooth navigation bar for jumping from the current tooth to another one. To go to the next or previous tooth, you can also navigate by swiping up or down on the tooth graph. On the top portion of the screen, you'll find buttons for adding pathologies and restorations to the tooth or mark the tooth as missing. The reset button will reset and delete all previously entered data. So use this button carefully. Adding a restoration or a pathology to the tooth is really simple and easy in Derek. In the single tooth view, press on the add a restoration button. Derek will switch to the tooth pad for entering data. The tooth pad was designed like a keyboard and shows you only the options you need for entering the restoration. This gives you the opportunity to navigate light speed quickly through the menu structure. In this example, we will enter an amalgam filling to tooth 17. Select filling on the tooth pad. Derek will now display the location options for entering the boundaries of that filling. You can not only choose from the classification of cavities defined by black, but also anatomical regions of the tooth which might be included in the filling. Select the tooth regions on the tooth pad. For example, mesial, occlusal, distal, and just for the fun of it, we'll select the mesial buccal cusp to be included in this filling as well. The selected tooth surfaces will first be highlighted in light blue. Next, choose the filling material, in our case, amalgam. Note that all the selected tooth surfaces turn dark gray. Let's dig into entering endodontic test results to the tooth. In the endodontic section, you have several endodontic tests to choose from. Please note that the cold test and the percussion test are already filled out since we've entered these findings through the quick select function. Let's add the palpitation test to record if the bone is tender to palpitation in the region of tooth 17. Select palpitation, 
then choose from the reaction the patient reports after performing this test. In our case, not painful. The heat and electricity tests are not so often used in regular checkups. So use them in case you need to test the pulp with heat or in case you perform an electronic pulp test. For example, in trauma cases. <music> Let's record the periodontal situation on tooth 17. In the single tooth view, please note for full periodontal examination, we highly suggest using the periodontal probing function in the chart view. To enter periodontal findings to tooth 17, press on the add probing button. Derek will show you the period pad for entering data. The period pad consists of five different sections. The six measuring points you can select to enter data. The probing depth pad. The gingival margin pad for recording recession or a hyperplastic gum line. Buttons for adding bleeding, plaque, pus or tartar. In multi-rooted teeth, you will also be able to record any furcation involvement. Let us quickly enter some data. First, select the measuring site where you want to add your recordings. For example, mesiobuckle, then enter your probing depth. If you observe any bleeding, plaque, pus or tartar on the site, enter these findings using the respective buttons. Record any recession or hyperplastic gum line if present. Hit save, done. Periodontal recording can either be performed in the single tooth view or highly suggested using the periodontal probing function in the chart view. By selecting the periodontal probing bar item in the top portion of the screen, followed by selecting the tooth you want to start your recording process, Derek will present you the period pad for easy and fast data entering. The period pad consists of five sections. The statues bar with buttons for navigating to the next or previous tooth, the six recording sites of the selected tooth, a number field for entering the probing depth to a selected recording site, buttons for adding additional findings like bleeding, plaque, pus or tartar, a button for navigating to the next tooth. This button will jump to the next tooth from left to right. You can use the period pad in all three views of the chart. Since we record the periodontal probings on the buckle and the oral aspects of the teeth, we highly suggest you switch to the upper or lower jaw view. These views give you the best overview. Let's start the periodontal recording on tooth 18. First, go to the upper jaw view. Then select tooth 18, followed by the recording site you want to enter data. Enter the measured probing depth using the number field. By default, Derek is set up to receive first the probing depths. Gingival recession can be entered by selecting the gingival margin button, followed by the measured recession amount. With the plus or minus button, you can change the entries for recession or hyperplastic gingiva respectively. Enter additional findings like bleeding, plaque, pus or tartar you will discover after your probing. Press on the next tooth button to jump to tooth 17. Since we've already entered periodontal probing to tooth 17 in the single tooth view, we can advance to the next tooth with the next tooth button. Derek will jump straight to tooth 15 since tooth 16 is missing. A neat feature of the periodontal probing function is the built-in voice feedback. You can activate the voice feedback by pressing on the speaker icon in the status bar. The voice feedback was implemented so you and your assistant are always on the same tooth at the same time. There's nothing more annoying when you and your assistant will lose track during a periodontal recording. With the voice feedback activated, you can hear all the entries your assistant is doing. This gives you the confirmation that both of you are on the same track. Continue your recording till finished. Congratulations! You have entered all findings to Derek. Let's take a look at how Derek presents the recorded data to you 
and how you can inform your patient about his oral situation. Informing your patient is a must for good compliance. Since many dental charts present the data with a tsunami of lines, colors, and yes, sometimes on different charts, your patient will lose track of what you are talking about. A key concept of Derek is to present the data only when it makes sense. To ensure that your patient can easily understand your explanations, we included filtering buttons to blend out the information on the charts you don't need. All three chart views can be filtered by the main three oral tissues in Derek, namely the dental, the periodontal, and endodontic findings. The filtering buttons are located on the bottom left portion of the screen. For example, by deselecting dental and endo, Derek will only show the periodontal findings and you can focus your discussion so that your patient can understand his situation. In the upper and lower jaw view, you can also see the plaque, bleeding and pus active sites on the teeth. This is a great way of demonstrating to the patient how inflamed his gum is and where he needs to perform better oral hygiene. We also included a legend where you can look up what means what on the chart. Let's filter the dental findings. Deselect perio and select dental. Now, you can focus more on problems related to the dental hard tissue or filling that needs to be replaced. Please note, all teeth that have been marked with a to-do item during the examination process are marked on the chart with a red dot on the tooth number. Let's go to the Patient's Overview page. In the Patient's Overview, you will see all to treat and to observe items in the Treatment Plan section. In the Oral Health section, you see the automatically calculated plaque and bleeding index. So next time Buck Rogers comes to your dental office, you have a great overview on what to do and how good Buck's oral hygiene is. Let's focus on endodontic diagnostics. Endodontic findings can either be entered via the quick select function or through the single tooth view. On a regular checkup, you might dust several teeth in a row with a cold and percussion test. The quick select function is a fast and easy way to enter these findings in one go. In some situations, like an emergency patient in pain, you focus more on a single tooth or a group of teeth that might give the patient pain. Full endodontic diagnostics require mostly three clinical tests. The cold test for checking the tooth pulp, the percussion test for testing the periapical tissues and an x-ray of the tooth under investigation. To make your life easier, we made Derek so smart that it'll suggest the endodontic diagnostic of a specific tooth to you. This is based on the entries you perform on these three tests. Here's how this works. Let's assume that Buck comes to your clinic with pain in the lower right jaw. After a thorough anamnesis, you'll check the teeth in this quadrant. On tooth 46, you perform the cold test. Buck will jump on your dentist chair and report that the tooth is very painful even after you remove the cold from the tooth. Then you perform the percussion test. On the x-ray, you see that tooth 46 has no periapical translucency around the root apices. Let's record all these findings in the single tooth view. Go to tooth 46. For entering the periapical findings, go to pathology. Select apical, choose no. Since tooth 46 shows no periapical translucency on the x-ray, select the cold test. Select positive, then pain lingering, select percussion test, select painful. After entering all three test results, Derek will pop up with a diagnostic suggestion of that tooth. In Buck's case, a reversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis on tooth 46. When you agree with the suggested diagnosis, Derek will mark the pulp as a to-do. The pulp turns red. In the chart view, you will see the test results through the changing endo icons. A snowflake tells you that the tooth is painful on cold. The percussion symbol tells you that the tooth is painful to percussion. Next step, 
would be to perform a pulpotomy or a root canal treatment. Next time Buck comes to your dental office, you will perform the endo tests again. To change the status of the tooth, go to single tooth view, select the code test. Since we either performed a pulpotomy or a root canal treatment, the code test is not applicable anymore. Select not applicable and choose from the two options. Let's select existing root canal treatment. Since the last time tooth 46 was not painful on percussion, go to the percussion test, select painful. The diagnosis of tooth 46 has changed from irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis to previously root canal treated tooth 46 with normal periapical tissues. Also note that the endo icons have disappeared in the chart view. Plus, tooth 46 is now listed as a to observe item since we have to check the tooth after 12 months. Derek will give you unlimited access to all your previous statuses of the dental chart. With the rollback feature, you can always go back in time to load any changes you made on the chart. Let's demonstrate this on our demo patient, John Derrick. Go to the patient's list and select John Derrick. Go to the chart view. In the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see a clock symbol. By pressing on the clock symbol, Derrick will present a list of dates. You can go back in time to load the dental chart of John Derrick on that specific date. This is highly important to check if your performed treatment has changed something. For example, the record in April shows quite severe periodontitis. The next entry in May shows that your periodontal treatment already made the periodontal situation better. The last entry in August shows a fully healthy periodontal situation. This is also important to show the progress to the patient. The rollback feature is not only available for periodontal data, you can track all your changes no matter what entry you made. When you exit the rollback function, Derek will automatically load the last chart available from that patient. Let's assume that Buck Rogers wants to have his data to go to another dentist for a second opinion. By the GDPR, Buck must have access to his dental data by any time. Exporting data from Derek is incredibly easy and can be done in no time. We included a PDF export function for the last dental chart. Here's how this can be done. On the left portion of the screen, you'll see a PDF button. By pressing on this button, Derek will export all the data and will create a nice looking PDF file you can either print out or send as a PDF file to the patient by mail. Let's take a look at how to update Buck's dental chart through the treatment plan section. In our treatment plan, tooth 17 is marked with an insufficient amalgam filling we have chosen to replace. To update the chart with a new filling, click on the to-do item. Derek will directly jump to the restoration menu on tooth 17. Now you can enter your performed treatment and hit save. In the single tooth view, hit done to resolve the to-do. Congratulations, you just updated Buck's dental chart with a new crown on tooth 17. Please note that the to-do item in the treatment plan section is now gone.